So these definitions got left out of your notes, so I need you to add them in. Pause the video, add them in, and then we'll get going. All right, so chemical equilibrium, we're doing a very light version of chemical equilibrium. I'm not making you calculate the equilibrium constant. We're basically just going to be talking about what is equilibrium and then how to predict how an equilibrium will change based on stressing the system. Okay. So first of all, you need to know that most chemical reactions are reversible. And the way that we show that something is reversible is we do this double-headed arrow. That means that it is possible to have the forward reaction, which would be making the products, or we could reverse it and the products could break down and reform uh, the reactants. Um, so if we were to read this equation as the forward, when, when we would write it like this, seems pretty straightforward. And if we were to read it as a reverse, we would say 2AB breaks down into A2 plus B2. Okay. So when we see that double-headed arrow, we have to know that both reactions are possible. Okay? Yes? So could a substance form into two A, B, and then immediately break down into A's on the two different particles? So something, well, yes, they are actually. That's what equilibrium is. Both, both opposing reactions are happening at the same rate. So we're fixing to find that out. Okay? So if, uh, as time passes, what happens is when I first start the reaction, the forward reaction is what's dominating. So as time passes, though, the forward reaction begins to decrease the rate, and the reverse reaction begins to increase the rate until the two rates are equal, okay? Doesn't mean they have the same concentrations, but the rates that they're forming or, or decomposing, whatever you want to look at it, is happening at the same rate, and that's what we call chemical equilibrium. So at, the, at an equilibrium condition is one in which the rates of the two opposing te uh, tendencies are happening at the same rate. Okay, again, not necessarily producing the same concentrations, but they're happening at the same rate. So an example of that is one of my big pet peeves, especially because we live in the south, and especially in Texas. When it gets in the wintertime and it gets zero degrees Celsius outside, everybody freaks out and panics and thinks the whole world's going to freeze over. At zero degrees Celsius, you are at equilibrium between water, <coughs> between water freezing and water melting. It's happening at the same rate. That's why the world doesn't magically freeze over when you get to zero degrees Celsius. You have to get quite a bit cooler than that for everything to go to a hard freeze. Okay, that's why they don't usually give a hard freeze warning with the weather until it's going to stay below freezing for an extended period of time. Because at zero degrees Celsius, you are at equilibrium. Kind of like when we talked that question you all missed on the test about during boiling. During boiling, in a especially in a closed system, if I'm boiling water, the same amount of water is, is vaporizing as is condensing at 100 degrees Celsius. So if I were to put a lid on it, um, the, it would never change volume. It would be in, in equilibrium position. Now, when we boil water at home, we have the lid off so the steam escapes, so then eventually we could boil the water completely off. But in a closed system, when I'm containing my vapor, it would be at equilibrium. Okay? Uh, anybody have a terrarium? Or you know what a terrarium is? It's like a closed, not wet, well, not wet, aquarium, I guess. I don't know how to explain this. But there's water in the system. Once it's closed and sealed up with whatever critters and plants and stuff you have in there, you don't ever do anything to it, okay? It's because that system is in equilibrium with each other. You've got equal water evaporating as you do condensing and the circle of life and all that stuff going on in there. It's equilibrium, okay? So this is what that looks like. So in the beginning of a reaction, going from reactants to products, it, in the beginning of that, this one is increasing because I'm making products, okay? Yes? So you said not everything freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Does everything, like what time it freezes or when it freezes, have to do with like specific heat? Um, yes, but I, I was talking in terms of water because everybody freaks out because it's freezing and the roads are going to ice up. That's what I was, I was referring to. I did leave that part out. But, like, there, I mean, over the years, if it's gotten really cold outside, it starts getting close to, well, 32F. Ooh, yeah. And so all of a sudden, parents start running up there to pick up their kids because they think their roads are going to freeze. I'm like, no, it's going to be okay. 
The roads aren't going to magically freeze because there's water out there and it's 32F. It has to get, yeah. Plus, in Texas, another issue is the ground is warm. So, yeah. So, um, but when we first start a reaction, someone give him a pencil. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as the reaction proceeds, so the... Uh, one going from reactants to products is increasing. Of course, products going to reactants, it's decreasing. But about right here, they're happening at the same rate. They're constant. That's the whole purpose of giving him a pencil. Thank you. Make sure I get that back. That's magic. It's got a pen and pencil in the same one. Okay. It's a gift from a student as well, but it is magical. Okay. Um, anyway, so you're, this will kind of help you see that the rates are happening at the same rate, but your concentrations can be different. So in this case, I still have more product than reactant that was made, but at some point, it looks like the reaction went to completion and stopped, but really what's happening is on the surface level, it looks like nothing's happening, but on the molecular level, I've got some that are reversing and some that are still going forward, and so it looks like nothing's happening. But in fact, it's dynamic equilibrium is happening on the particulate letter level. And there's just another uh, visual representation concerning particles. And then this kind of shows you that what we've been talking about, that the forward and the reaction are happening at the same rate, but that doesn't mean that their concentrations are the same. Okay, it does not mean that. And then there's one showing you rate versus amount, and you'll see that when you're just doing time versus rate, you get down here and you have equal rates, but not changes not equal concentrations or amounts, okay? So I want to make sure you understand that because a lot of times people think, oh, it's at equilibrium, their concentrations are the same. No, it's not. So it's where they level, the same level, they're constant. Mm -hmm. So you want me to go back to that? So it's not here. This is not equilibrium. Equilibrium is established approximately here and approximately here. When they're, well, maybe a little further. I, sh I shifted when they're equal. So more like right here when they're equal. So when no change. Parallel. parallel, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so shifting equilibrium. Um, this brings us to Le Chatelier principle. Okay, according to Le Chatelier, a system at equilibrium. So we're talking about systems that establish an equilibrium, and then we're going to do something to change it. We're going to stress it. Okay, so we are stressing the system, and what happens is it adjusts, it makes adjustments in the system to restore its equilibrium. It is said to shift, and normally we will say things like shift left, shift right, or no shift, okay? Um, when we say shift left, we mean that it favors the, product, the reactants, because that's the left side of the equation, okay? Um, let me stress that this is for a system that was at equilibrium, and then we made a change, Okay, so it was already leveled out, and then we said, oh, let's increase the temperature. Oh, let's add some more stuff to it. And so it will, the, the reaction will shift in order to minimize that stress. Okay, so these are the things that can affect the equilibrium. I want you to put a star by catalyst, because we'll find that it actually makes no difference, but we need to talk about it. Uh, so let's talk about changes in concentration first. So if I change the concentration, meaning I'm either going to add some reactant or I'm going to take away some reactant. I might add one of the products or take away one of the products. So if I increase the concentrations, this will cause a shift away from the increased species. So whatever I increase, whatever concentration I increase, the reaction shifts away from it. So if I am increasing one of the reactants, it will shift away from that towards the products. If I increase one of the products, it will shift away from that back to the left towards the reactants. It shifts away from it. So it's the opposite if I decrease it. If I decrease the concentration, it shifts toward it. Okay? So we'll do an example.
So here I have H2 plus I2 going to HI. If I were to decrease the amount of the reactant, where is it going to shift? So it's going to shift left, is what we call that. Or we can draw our arrow, because it's going to shift that way. So that means it's going to favor the reactants. So that means the reactants would increase their concentration. The products would decrease their concentration. Right? If I favor, if I favor the reactants, that means their con concentration increases. If I favor the products, the products increase. So if I were to increase the amount of the reactant, it's going to shift away from it. So it would shift to the right. So that means the equilibrium would lie in that position to the right. So that means now I'm going to favor my products, which means in this case the HI concentration would increase, the H2 and the I2's concentration would decrease. Okay? Are we good with that explanation so far? Anybody dazed, lost, and confused? Well, in this one, it's saying if, if I decrease the amount, it's going to shift toward the thing that was being decreased because that's what the principle is, okay? So I'm removing it, okay? So think of it this way. If I remove some of it, can I keep making product? No. So it's going to shift towards the, the reactants. If I add more concentration, can I make some more product? Yeah. So you can think of it that way too, okay? So... Let's do temperature now. Changing the temperature will cause the reaction to shift to minimize the heat effect. Okay? So we're going to treat temperature as if it's a product or reactant. Okay? So if temperature is increased, it will shift away from where the heat is. So this is where we have to know, is this our endothermic or exothermic reaction? If the temperature is decreased, it will shift toward the heat. Okay? So remember in a thermochemical equation, <clears throat> we treat heat as either a reactant or a product. Okay? If it's endothermic, what do I treat it as? It's a reactant. reactant. If it's exothermic, I treat it as a product. So then we'll base our shifting on what kind of reaction do we have. Yeah. So in this one, we have an endothermic reaction because heat's a, heat's a reactant, so we know it's endothermic. So if I were to decrease the temperature, it would shift how? Towards the reactant. Towards the reactant, so it would shift left. So the equilibrium would lie in that position. So that means we favor the reactants. You treat heat as either a reactant or a product. Yeah. So if I decrease the temperature, it shifts toward the heat, wherever the heat is. Okay? So if I increase, I would shift right. So it would favor the products. Now, you cannot just memorize, I decreased temperature, it shifted left. No, because if it was endo an exothermic, it would actually be opposite, so you got to look at it. So I want to do one of those just to be sure. So let's say I have A plus B yields C plus some heat. So now if I increase temp, which way will it shift? It's going to shift away from it, so it would shift left and favor reactants. And then if I decrease temp, it would shift right and favor the products. Everybody good with that explanation? Anybody? Yes? What if it just says like increase the temperature of the system, does that mean that you're just adding it so it's on the side? Well, you're well, yeah, I mean, that's the only thing we can do is we can't increase the temperature of just one side. We're if increasing... Heat, if it doesn't say that heat's already there... Are you looking ahead at the worksheet? Please don't do that because I have to make a correction. Uh. <laughs>
I've known, see, that's how I've known everybody's looking at the worksheet today. They forgot to tell you. So without knowing if it's endothermic or exothermic, you can't actually predict. Yeah, you have to know. So I'm going to tell you what's that, what I want it to be. I've got to try to remember what I told the other classes. I can't remember if I told them endo or exo. Okay, pressure. So when we're talking about pressure, first of all, this word should not be there. It will only affect, if you had to guess, what will pressure only affect in an equilibrium system? Somebody said it. No, gases. Only fix gases. <coughs> so when we're talking about pressure, it will only affect gases. Okay? Solids and liquids don't have a pressure, do they? Say no. no. Don't say eh. They don't have a pressure. Huh? That's pre that's that is the putting the pressure on your the gases in you. Not Okay. Uh, if the pressure Okay, so if there if you're looking at the reaction and there are equal number of gases, uh, equal number of particles or moles, there will be no shift. Okay? No shift will occur if you have two moles on each side or three moles on each side. However, if the pressure is increased, uh, the shift will be toward the side with fewer number of moles of gas. If the pressure is decreased, it will shift toward the number, oh, not larger, more with more number of moles of gas, sorry. Okay? So increase, it sh shifts to the fewer. Decrease, it shifts to the more. Okay, so let's do an example. So we have three moles on this side going to two moles. That is a very poor arrow. It's a little better. Okay? So if I increase the pressure, which way is it going to shift? going to shift right. right because when I increase the pressure it shifts toward the side with fewer moles so this is going to favor SO3 right so that means SO3's concentration would be higher okay if I decrease the pressure it's going to shift left so now I would favor SO2 and O2 what about volume Hmm. What if I'm changing volume? Okay, so if I increase my volume, what happens to my pressure? Pressure decreases, so then I would shift left. If I decrease my volume, pressure increases, so it would shift right. Make sense? Yeah. I can't. It make it does make sense in my head too. Sometimes they make sense in my head, and I can't make it make sense in your head. So if pressure increases in volume. Yeah, because remember they're indirectly proportional. From the gas laws unit, pressure and volume are indirectly. So if I and think about this logically, if I have this volume and I have so many particles and then I increase pressure my volume gets smaller so now I have what more particles per space so I have more concentrated all right catalyst adding a catalyst it will speed up how quickly I reach equilibrium but it will not shift the equilibrium will not shift the equilibrium okay so when you add a catalyst, it's no shift. So equilibrium will be achieved quicker or more quickly, however you want to say that. Is it quicker or more quickly? More quickly. More quickly. More quickly. More quickly. Let's, yeah, it'll be reached faster. But does not change the equilibrium position.
I'm writing in cursive. I'm sorry. I know y'all can't read that. I have lots of people that say, I don't know what that says. I'm like, um, it's because it's in cursive. I think that they should still teach it. Yeah, I think they should still teach it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.